Hey everyone, and welcome to our first healer tier list for the beginning of the Sinful Season 1 of Shadowlands. Our last tier list, which you can see on screen now, was put together purely from the final stages of the beta. And as a result, there have been a lot of changes as well as current gear and soulbind levels being slightly behind. But now that the season is well and truly underway and players have had time to play and help establish a meta, we've hit up our rank one consultants and worked together to put together what we consider a solidified early season tier list. For this tier list, we're going to be placing our healers into four separate tiers, ranging from unranked to S. But before we do get into things, we wanted to let you know that we recently relaunched our World of Warcraft site over at skillcap.com. It's got a brand new look, and our core system is filled with introductory class guides for every class from some of the best players around, including Chanimal, Maro, Zpi, and Zuniaki, just to name a few. We've also packed in courses with arena commentaries and user reviews that you can watch to learn how the pros make their decisions in real time and help you all learn from your mistakes together. So if you're interested in taking your PVP game to the next level and starting your journey to Gladiator, head on over to skillcap.com slash wow and sign up today, link in the description below. And if you're interested in joining our community Discord, which is filled with useful resources and quick access guides, we've also got that linked in the description. Starting off, we've got our unranked tier in which we're going to be placing our first healer, Holy Priest. The reasoning behind Holy Priest not getting a ranking is that we've honestly not got enough data to work from. Holy is majorly underrepresented inside of PvP. What we have seen of them though is that they do seem quite weak, but regardless, if more players look to pick up this spec and make it work, they could jump up our rankings. Transitioning over to Shadowlands, Holy Priest has lost a lot of what made it strong in BFA, primarily the added 15 CD attached to Greater Heal. They did get a few new additions to compensate, such as Power Word Shield, Shadow Word Death, and the new PvP talent Cardinal Mending and Divine Ascension. But sadly, this just isn't enough to make Holy Priest a favored healer in any composition right now. Despite that, the toolkit of Holy is very niche, and if you ask me, incredibly fun to play around with, Talents like Greater Fade, Holy Ward, and now the added Shadow Word Death make you one of the most annoying healers to try and lock down. Where Holy falters though is their lack of any real strong healing output. If your Holy Word Serenity and Prayer of Mending are on cooldown, you're going to struggle to heal through any real pressure, and to do so, you're going to have to hard cast with only one school of healing spells. But the biggest reason we don't see any Holy Priests is when compared to a Discipline Priest, there just isn't any real reason to ever spec Holy. You've got less damage, do less healing, provide no damage reductions, and if enemies know how to play around your cooldowns, you and your team will struggle to survive. All right, so moving on to our B tier now, we've got Mistweaver Monks. Mistweaver Monks have gotten the short end of the straw going into Shadowlands, receiving next to no changes or any new notable additions from how they were in BFA. Despite being one of the most mobile healers having two roles and even a portal, their main weakness right now is that they simply put, just die. Mistweaver has historically relied on their mobility in order to survive when being focused. In Shadowlands, we've seen many new additions which help players maintain uptime. Things like the Warrior Kyrian ability Spear of Bastion and the DK Abomination limb result in classes which usually struggled to kill a Mistweaver, now being able to maintain uptime and set up kills with ease. That's without even talking about sub rogues. Again, as we know, Mistweaver relies on mobility to survive. If caught inside of a stun without a trinket or pre-fortifying brew, you're about as good as dead in our current fast-paced meta, having only really the now much longer cooldown life cocoon to use as a recovery mechanic. And while it's on cooldown, Mistweaver lacks what a lot of our stronger healers provide, instant strong healing. To get healing out, you're required to hard cast a lot more than other healers, and as we know, in such a fast-paced metagame, a single interrupt can be the deciding factor inside Arena. Over the recent patches, Mistweaver has also had their damage toned down drastically, to now being at the point where they offer almost nothing offensively in terms of damage. What Mistweaver does have though is very strong throughput if they can actually get to cast being able to heal through almost any damage, which is about the only strength right now, as even then, doing so requires you to burn through your mana bar almost instantly. If we do end up having the meta slow down and some of the stronger classes tuned, it's more than likely that we'll see Mistweaver climb up the ranks, but for now, they're firmly set in our lowest tier of B. 
All right, jumping up to our A tier, we've got Restoration Druids. Going into Shadowlands, Resto Druids had one of the most exciting kits on the beta. Buffed Affinities, Heart of the Wild, Cyclone becoming Baseline, and all of the potential damage they can do inside of cat form. But unfortunately, despite having this very strong kit, the current meta just isn't made for the Resto Druid. Outside of the cooldown on Nature's Swiftness, Restoration Druid relies on their healing over time effects to heal through the damage, but with most classes capable of dealing insane amounts of both burst damage and high consistent damage, the Druid's healing over time effects just don't do enough throughput, and as a result, enemies can often just straight up kill targets through your attempts at healing. You have next to no chance at healing through the damage of something like Rogue Mage, who can klepto your healing over time effects. Or both Shadow Priests and Discipline Priests, who can simultaneously purge and also steal Rejuvenation with Thought Steal, leaving you with no chance at ever healing through any real pressure. Despite all of this, they are still much stronger than Mistweavers and Holy Priests, who fell lower on the list. And this is due to that immense toolkit that we mentioned. Offensively, nothing comes close to the power of Cyclone. Having the ability to spam CC on enemy healers, Cyclone targets low, or just generally Cyclone to reduce damage is a very strong trait. In the right composition that helps to gloss over some of the weaknesses of Druid, such as when paired up with strong hybrids, allows you more time to spend utilizing the offensive toolkit and it's why they've earned their spot in our A tier. That being said, once the meta does end up slowing down, there is the potential to see Resto Druid pounce up our tier list even further. All right, so we've reached the moment that you've all been waiting for, our final and strongest tier, the S tier. Still well and truly solidified in their spot in our highest tier, we've got Discipline Priest, which considering all the nerfs they've seen thrown their way throughout the beta is a feat in and of itself. Discipline Priest brings a kit that is always going to be strong when inside of PvP, the ability to provide high damage while also converting that damage into healing with the Tonement is a mechanic that is simply unrivaled. And when I say high damage, I mean high damage. The additions of both Mind Blast and Mind Games make Discipline Priest capable of bringing absurd amounts of damage to any setup. On top of additions like Power Infusion and Dark Archangel, they make a perfect complement to any burst damage healer. So, specs like Sub Rogue, Fire Mage, Ferals, and even Windwalkers, which all happen to be at the forefront of the metagame right now. But surely a spec that brings this much offensively lacks in the defensive department though. Well, no they don't. Damage reductions are incredibly strong right now for the main reason that damage is really high, and without a damage reduction, it can become very hard to heal through pressure. Disc brings both Power Word Barrier, which can be combined with Dome of Light, and of course, Pain Suppression. Healing through damage is also done with relative ease thanks to multiple schools of magic. If you get kicked on Shadow Mend, you can just cast Penance for instance. And also, thanks to the addition of the Shining Radiance Conduit, Discipline has a ton of instant healing with Ultimate Radiance. As a result of this though, their main weakness right now is their mana efficiency. To heal through high damage, you have to be very inefficient with your mana usage. We could see this becoming a problem when games slow down a bit, but for now, Disc Priest earns their rightful spot in our highest tier. Moving on to our next addition to our S tier is going to be Holy Paladin. Holy Paladin was set to be one of the weakest healers going into Shadowlands, mainly down to their loss of borrowed power from BFA. May you rest in corruption, you'll be dearly missed. As you probably know though, if the meta is how it is now and every class is taking turns one-shotting each other, what healer do you look to? Yeah. Paladins. The main reason is their insanely strong defensive CDs. In terms of cooldowns, nothing else comes close to the power of Blessing of Sacrifice, Blessing of Protection, and of course, Divine Shield for themselves. This combined with their very strong healing throughput, which is, for the most part, instant thanks to Holy Shock and the newly added Word of Glory, especially during their Avenging Wrath, resulting in Holy Paladins being able to heal teammates up quickly and without the need to stop and cast. Going into Shadowlands, Paladins have also seen numerous strong abilities returning to the game, namely Saved by the Light, which is great at helping to prevent your teammates randomly getting burst down, and Concentration Aura, which reduces the duration of kicks on yourself and your teammates, and this is notably strong when combined with Aura Mastery, which gives your entire team an immunity to interrupts for a short period. And all of this is combined with some of the best mana efficiency in the game. And our last, but definitely not least, addition to our S tier is going to be Restoration Shamans. Restoration Shamans heading into Shadowlands were up in arms about the removal of the Azerite trait, Pack Spirit, 
with the Doomsayers predicting they wouldn't even be viable. Well, now look at them. Resto Shaman has seen numerous buffs to their overall healing, with a lot of focus on their instants. Thanks to their mastery, deep healing, combined with the numerous buffs to Riptide alongside Healing Stream Totem, Healing Tide, Primordial Wave, and of course Earth Shield, which can be further improved upon thanks to the go-to legendary Earthen Harmony, buffing its healing by a further 150%. This means it's a rare sight to ever catch a Resto Shaman ever even having to cast a single heal. New additions such as Mana Tide Totem and Water Shield mean their mana efficiency is also unmatched. On top of their strong instant healing, Resto Shaman has had their offensive pressure significantly improved upon with Lava Burst now packing a considerable punch, meaning their offensive kit is very strong with all of the disruption from Wind Shear, Grounding, the ability to purge, and even looking to utilize Hex where possible. Much like Paladins, Restoration Shamans also bring a lot of buried defensive CDs, the damage reduction of Earthen Wall Totem, the safety net of Spirit Link, and also the huge burst healing from Ascendance. And with most compositions in the meta being more melee-centric, Restoration Shamans are great at kiting and surviving with their multiple slows and roots combined with the speed of Ghost Wolf. All around, a very versatile and strong healer right now, but if we do see some nerfs to their instant healing, Restoration Shamans could very easily drop down a few tiers. Alright then, that's going to be it for our best PvP healers in Shadowlands Patch 9.0 tier list. We'll be releasing both melee and range DPS lists later this week. But for now, we hope everyone is enjoying the PvP season so far, and be sure to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button to be notified the moment we release any new content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.